Welcome to lecture 11. Here we'll just continue our discussion of momentum. Okay? So we'll review for a second. We defined linear momentum. Linear momentum. As the product, P, we use the symbol P because we don't want to use M because M looks like mass. So we use the symbol little p. It's just simply the mass times the speed. When we discuss vectors, you'll see it's really the mass times the velocity. And the units of momentum are kilograms times meters per second. And there's no special unit for that. So energy and work, we have joules. Force, we have newtons. Here, no special unit. Now, the last thing we discussed in lecture 10 was conservation of, of linear momentum. And we used the example of a bullet being fired from a rifle. And I said, if the system has zero initial momentum, then final, whatever happens, the total momentum must also be zero. And so if we fire a bullet, the bullet goes off this way, the rifle recoils this way, the momentum of the bullet, say it's positive, positive x, then the momentum of the rifle would have negative x, so a negative 50 kilogram meters per second, and the total would still be zero. So we start with zero, plus 50, minus 50, or whatever it is, uh, the total is still zero, okay? I'm going to do an example for you now, a simple example, and uh, we're going to use model cars. I'm going to give a before an after picture, okay? So let's imagine we have toy cars, okay? And the car A, I'll draw a little car, call it car A, is moving with the speed V sub A, okay? I'll give the, and it's gonna have a mass M sub A. Suppose now it hits car B, okay? And V sub B is zero. It's not moving. And we have an M sub B. Let's suppose that M sub A is five kilograms. Remember, they're toys. M sub B is, let's just say, 15 kilograms. And let's give a speed V sub A. Let's say V sub A is equal to 20 meters per second. Okay, so we have a system. One car is going to hit into another, right? They're going to collide because the second vehicle, the second toy, is not moving. Okay? Let's look at the total momentum before. Okay? Total momentum. Oops. Before. Okay? Well, I'm going to write this as the momentum of A plus the momentum of B. Okay, and I'm going to put before, before. Okay, so the total momentum of the system is the momentum of this object plus the momentum of this object. Well, momentum, remember, is just mass times, times the speed. So I'm going to write m sub a, v sub a, plus m sub b, v sub b. That's the total momentum. If we put in numbers, m sub a was 5 kilograms, v sub a was 20, 5 times 20 gives us 100 kilogram meters per second. Plus, M sub B was 15 kilograms, but V sub B is zero. If you're not moving, you have zero momentum. You also have zero kinetic energy. So the total momentum before is equal to 100 kilogram meters per second. So we know that the total momentum before must equal the total momentum after. So what happens when one object hits into another? Well, in real life, if they're real cars, what happens is car A comes in, hits car B, they stick together, and then move off. Okay. Car A hits car B, they stick together, they're fenders in mesh, and total 
combined object moves off at a certain speed. So we want to find that combined speed. So here's the after picture. I'm going to draw all crinkly, okay? That's car A, and it's whooshed into car B, okay? And the total is going to move off at a V final. I'm going to call it V sub F, V final. If we look at this object, the total mass is MA plus MB. Remember, the objects are sticking together. So what's the final momentum? The final momentum is going to be the total mass, which is MA plus MB, times the final speed, V sub F. And we want to find V sub F. We want to find the final speed at which these two objects move off. Okay? We know the answer. The answer must be 100 kilogram meters per second because the final momentum must equal the initial momentum. So let's look. What is MA plus MB? MA is 5 kilograms. MB is 15. 5 plus 15 is what? 20. So we have 20. That's V sub F. 20 V sub F must equal what? 100 kilogram meters per second. Now, this is 20 kilograms, so I'm being very careless, okay? 20 kilograms, okay? 20 kilograms into 100 kilogram meters per second. 20 goes out. This becomes what? 5. And kilograms goes out with kilograms. So we find that V sub F is equal to 5 meters per second, okay? So the objects, once they collide, move off much slower than the initial object moving at V sub A, which was 20 meters per second. Conservation momentum, the total momentum you begin with has to equal the total momentum you finish with. All right, I'm going to say a quick word now about not linear momentum, but about angular momentum. And the example I'll give you, we're all familiar with, as you'll see. So I'm going to talk about angular momentum. Okay, suppose I give it this cap, the symbol capital L, okay? Well, just like little p for linear momentum, the total angular momentum you begin with has to equal the total angular momentum you finish with, okay? Conservation of angular momentum. Remember our conservation laws. Remember what a conservation law says? Conservation law says what you begin with has to equal what you finish with. So we had conservation of energy. Remember, total energy is kinetic plus potential. So the initial energy has to equal the final energy. Conservation of linear momentum, the initial linear momentum has to equal the final linear momentum. And now we're discussing conservation of angular momentum. The initial angular momentum must equal the final angular momentum. For this, I'm not giving you an equation, no math. Let's just discuss it in words for one second, okay? So if I use the symbol L for angular momentum, I'm going to say L total before has to equal L total after, whatever after is, okay? So the total angular momentum before something happens has to equal the total angular momentum after it happens. So remember, linear momentum was mass times the speed. Well, angular momentum is going to depend on something called the angular speed, how fast it's rotating. Okay. Now, what about mass? You know, in, in linear momentum, we talk about the mass times the speed. Here, we need something with mass, but it's not exactly mass. What it is, in physics, it's known as the moment of inertia. What is the moment of inertia? The moment of inertia is the mass, but it's also how the mass is distributed about the rotation point. Uh, that sounds very complicated, and it is, but let's just look for one second. Let's look at this marker, okay? Suppose I take a vertical axis and I spin the marker. You see? It spins a certain way, okay? Same mass. Now I'm going to take this eraser and suppose I pivot it at one end. Now it pivots like this. Its angular momentum is different or its moment of inertia is different. Why? It rotates differently this way than it does by spinning about the axis. If I put an axis through the center and spun it through the center, 
you see it's the same mass, but the mass, how it's distributed about a rotation axis is different. Again, this sounds very, very complicated. Let me give you a very, very simple example. The example we use is an ice skater. Oops, ice skater, okay? Let's consider an ice skater. We all have seen the Olympics and we see these incredible athletes. Now, as they rotate, as they spin, they go at a certain speed, okay? I can't do it too much because I'll pass out, okay? As they bring their arms in, notice their mass is staying the same. M is the same. Their rotation axis is vertical, say through the center, of their body, the mass, how it's distributed about this rotation axis changes. So what happens? As the ice skater brings her arms in, you see that there's less mass distributed about the rotation axis. In other words, the distance from the rotation axis is decreasing. So if one thing decreases, what has to happen? Well, it turns out her rotational speed increases. So as she brings her arms in, right, her moment of inertia, her mass distribution decreases, but her speed increases, okay? So the total angular momentum remains the same, okay? The moment of inertia, well, how the mass is distributed times the rotational speed is a constant, okay? If you bring your arms in, you move faster. You put your arms out, you move slower, okay? All right. I think that's all I'll say in this short video. In the next video, I'm going to discuss lecture, I'm going to discuss vectors, and then we'll take a, a break and we'll go over problems in all these things so we can see what we know. All right. See you in the next lecture.